What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Tully Television. And today we're going to be getting into our continuous review of Hawkeye. We are up to episode four. Uh, so we're pretty close to finishing this series up. Um, but before we get into all that, I want to thank everyone for stopping by, liking, commenting, sharing, hitting the subscribe bar, hitting that bell notification next to it, guys. Only through you can we grow our community. Each interaction helps the YouTube algorithm uh, expose our channel more to a bigger audience. So let's get let's get it going, guys. Together we can grow this channel to the heights I know we can. But uh, yeah, today Hawkeye episode four, partners. Am I right? <laughs> um, directed by Bert. Bert and Bertie, uh, written by Heather Quinn, <laughs> Harley Quinn, Heather Quinn, uh, no, Heather Quinn, Aaron Cancino, and Jonathan Igla, uh, I'm sorry, my nose is a little stuffy today, guys, so, uh, try to bear with me there for, uh, for the moment. Still dealing with, uh, nose congestion from leftover from the cactus. 99. Uh, of course, our stars of the show are Jeremy Renner as Clint Barton, Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop, Vera Farmiga as Eleanor Bishop, Tony Dalton as Jack DeQuince, 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 <laughs> Lawrence Pugh as Yelena Belova, Alquia Cox as Maya Lopez, Frey Free as Cassie, Linda, Car Linda Cardellini as Laura Barton, uh, 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 uh. Odette, uh, Odette, uh, Odette in Poe Thomas, Sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, Dayton Poe, Thomas as Wendy Conrad. Uh, in the comics, that character is known as Bob Cho. Um, Clayton English as Grills. Ava Russo as Lila Burton. Barton. Ben Shakamoto as Cooper, uh, Cooper Barton. Cade Woodward as Nate Barton. Now, we pick up with this episode where we left off with episode three, which was Jack holding the Ronin sword against Clint's throat. Uh, we pick up from that scene, and as he's going now face-to-face -face with Clint, uh, we see Eleanor coming out from the back of the house, surprised to see an Avenger uh, in her home. And then that's when Jack kind of realizes that it's Hawkeye, and you know, takes the Ronin sword down. And he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I uh, just thought there was someone weird in the house." Kate comes in. She explains that they were there just to do something, uh, real quick. But uh, Eleanor later realizes why she was there, because uh, she was able to access. Uh, she was able to be alerted to. Uh, Kate accessing the computer. Uh, that's when she learned in episode three that um, the tracksuit mafia is uh, being hired by a company called Sloan. And uh, Eleanor has these files, but she can't really, Kate can't really access these files deeper because she doesn't have the clearance. Uh, but Eleanor will discover that Kate is trying to find information about the tracksuit mafia and the people involved in that. Um, next thing we know is that uh, Kate and Clint are sitting on one side of the table and Eleanor and Jack are sitting on the other side of the table um, with one of Jack's swords in the middle of the table for some reason. Uh, 
Ronan sort of kind of left off from the distance uh, of the room they're talking in. And Eleanor explains, you know, she's worried about Kate and uh, maybe Kate shouldn't really be involved too much of what Clint is doing. Uh, especially if it's a Avengers business. Uh, Clint tries to uh, ease Eleanor's uh, concerns by saying it's nothing really that serious, just uh, just some light work, but, you know, he'll keep that in mind and try to keep uh, Kate away from everything. And as he gets up to leave, uh, we don't really see him picking up the Ronin sword, but we do know that later on in the episode he did swipe it from the house. Um, so as he as he approaches the elevator to leave, Eleanor stops him and kind of subtly uh, threatens him because she's like, you know, I know you're an Avenger and stuff, but uh, Kate. Uh, isn't really like that, really isn't built for that. Uh, Eleanor doesn't really seem to have much faith in Kate or just wants Kate to uh, take over the Bishop security uh, company only and forget about this hero BS. Clint uh, happens to say something to the degree of, well, I do know, you know, what I'm doing. Uh, Eleanor's response was, well, you know, so did the Black Widow. You know, she seemed to know what she was doing, too, but she died. You know, and that's when Eleanor was like, you know, Clint, do you have kids? Because if you had kids, you'd understand. You know, the, the, the uh, dilemma I'm in. So, you know, I just want to, you know, put that out there for you, you know, and that's kind of really, to me, uh, her kind of like putting it out there like as a threat, as a threat. I definitely took that as a threat. Uh, so Clint leaves. Kate leaves a few moments later after she promises her mother to, you know, stay away from these things, uh, these dangerous situations. But... Uh, we see Clint going to the safe house, and he's kind of just chilling with, like, a frozen pack of peas or something on his head. Uh, we do see these two characters get beat up pretty good, even though they're winning the day. Uh, they're just barely winning out some days. <laughs> uh, Clint is still trying to make it home. As he's going home, he talks, or as he's going to the safe house, though, he's talking to his wife, and his wife has information about uh, the company Sloan and the Traction Mafia, uh, like in five, ten minutes. And she's like in the middle of the country uh, on, a, on a barn, on a barn, <laughs> on a farm. I don't know why she'd be on a barn. I don't know why. Maybe she's, uh, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> uh, she's on a farm with the kids, so I don't know how she's getting this information, which only makes us believe more she was more involved in uh, maybe the espionage game before having kids. Maybe she was involved in these. Uh, type of missions before and we're now just learning about these things now but anyway uh the wife gives clint uh some information about uh the company uh jack seems to be the owner of this company sloan uh which basically makes him or appears to be that he's in charge of the tracksuit mafia but Jack isn't exactly on the top level. There's a level before him, supposedly. You know, it's Jack and then someone directly above Jack, and that's who's in charge. And they both reference the big guy. And so we are now kind of getting more clues on, on who Uncle may be. 
with certain uh, names of businesses like Fat Man Otto's, uh, Big Man, uh, in the MCU or Marvel, there's not too many big men that are um, in charge of crime like that, especially in New York City, except for the Kingpin. So, the saying the Kingpin might be coming. <laughs> That's a personal uh, thing for him, but, you know, he might be coming, uh, you know, but. <laughs> um, so finally that conversation is over. He goes to the safe house, has the pack of peas or whatever on his head. That's when Kate comes uh, with uh, the, the holiday movie marathon that he had promised his kids. She's feeling bad for him, so she wants to give him some sort of uh, Christmas uh, celebration, so to speak. Uh, she got <laughs> the ugly sweaters for them to wear and stuff. So they start putting in, uh, uh, she wanted up getting like uh, Die Hard and uh, the Griswolds holiday vacation and uh, pretty much all these movies you expect to see around Christmas time. And uh, they're making themselves a little bit of daiquiris. Uh, they, Clint is trying to teach how to like throw a coin kind of like this, you know, in a way to aim it and have it do damage. Because uh, he claims he can knock someone out uh, with just doing that. He learned that move from his brother. And then... Things get a little serious because we uh, get into kind of why he's doing this a little bit. And this is when she learns, Kate, that Clint is basically Ronan. Uh, he explained how he never came out and said, I'm Ronan. But he was like, you know, when uh, my family was flipped away, uh, I was very you know, angry and full of rage. And uh, then I had to, you know, f I felt like with all these things going on, I couldn't handle it anymore. And my anger came out in certain ways. And if it wasn't for, you know, Natalia, Natty, Black Widow, being there for him and giving him the hope uh, that he got at the end, he wouldn't know where he would be at. And that's why Natalia's death hit him even more. Because if it wasn't for her, he would not be in the position to see his family today. Or meaning to be involved in his family's life again, if it wasn't for uh, the Black Widow. She's the one that uh, pretty much was able to get uh, the last stone or one of the last few stones to uh, be able to blip everyone back. And um, Clint genuinely loved Natalia, Natty, uh, not in a romantic sense, you know, but as a genuine, I like, I love you as a person and I'm, I have a genuine interest in uh, how your life turns out. And then you know, it's a shame that, because you can see the heaviness on, on, on Clint's face. I would have to say this one thing about the show is that the acting has been pretty good. Uh, it's one of the highlights of the show. I think everyone's doing an excellent job. Uh, that, you know, Jeremy Renner, Haley Steinfeld, uh, the... Uh, Miss Cox, who's playing Maya, everyone is just doing a really great job. And um, so with that heaviness, he was like, you know, let's just go to bed because uh, we got to recover some of those arrows anyway uh, from the ones we were shooting off uh, when they were escaping from the track to Mafia the episode before, only to find out that these arrows were recovered by the same LARPing gang that grills is from. So basically we have Kate going to find uh, these people to uh, get the arrows back. Uh, she happens to 
make a deal with them saying, you know, if you give me back the arrows, maybe we can meet together and figure out uh, costume ideas for you guys and stuff like that. There's this one cop, though, that's willing to uh, mishandle the evidence, so to speak. Uh, at, at, at in Poe Thomas, Wendy Conrad, Wendy Conrad character is a police lady. Uh, so she's willing to help out Hawkeye and stuff. So that'd be an interesting thing to uh, see. Uh, how that play how that plays out for that will that character show up in the future you know uh of this show and you know after this show um also da -da 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 -da. so they're able to go do that clint it meets them back at the the safe house he's asking what's going on with the Warren group there's kate tells him he's just like you know, at this point, we need to get this done, so let's just go. Um, they do get uh, an address sent to them about where the Rolex is at. That was initially what the tracksuit mafia was looking for at that underground auction. So they go to um, where the address is. They're on a roof across the street from this address. Uh, Kate and Clint, and uh, Kate is asking, why don't we just go in there? Uh, Clint is saying, patience is a virtue. We need a backup plan in case we need to get out of there. And so he's uh, trying to be patient and look for uh, the best way to handle this situation. Uh, patience is usually a virtue. Um, I'll give you a story real quick about patience. Uh, there's a father bull and a son bull sitting up on a hill. And the son goes, hey, dad, why don't we run down there and fuck one of them? Meaning the cows. And the father bull bull's like, how about we walk down there and fuck them all? Um, patience is key. <laughs> you know. Uh, so uh, as he's trying to teach her about uh, patience, she just decides to... Uh, Go down and, you know, go downstairs and go into the apartment and make her way up to the apartment. And so at this point, Clint is like, all right, well, there's nothing I can do. Winds up making her way into the apartment. And uh, she's looking around. And we notice that it's Maya's apartment. Uh, Echo. And as... Um, we see the flashing lights in her apartment, and no one's, uh, Kate's not really realizing why flashing lights instead of a noise. Uh, Maya's not going to be able to hear the noise, but she'll see the flashing lights to alert her to a perimeter breach, so to speak. So Maya makes her way back home and starts fighting with Kate. And at the same time, um, Clint is fighting someone on the rooftop. And as Kate makes her way to back to the rooftop, Maya, Maya fo follows her. And now there's this big four-way fight between uh, Clint, Kate, Maya, and this other opponent. But we know who the other opponent is. It's Yelena Belova. And... So everyone is fighting to basically, like Maya and uh, Yelena have a quick tussle themselves where Yelena gives her a widow's bite. So that will just go to show you that Maya and Yelena are not working on the same uh, page. It's actually Eleanor that called in this Black Widow because uh, we've seen her earlier in the episode calling in saying, I need you now, basically sending Yelena to take out Clint. And so now Clint has to worry about not only the Tatsu Mafia and Maya and the big man, he has to worry about a Black Widow assassin. 
Clint winds up hitting Maya in the shoulder with an arrow. She takes off. And uh, Kate gets thrown off the side of the building but is saved by falling into uh, like a thing of lights, a bunch of string of lights, and saves herself. Yelena is about to take uh, Clint down, but Kate has a drop on her. Yelena takes off. And as Clint is getting up, he realizes how crazy deadly this is getting. And he's telling Kate, this is it. We can't, I can't have you involved no more. Uh, the tracksuit mafia, the big man, now I got a black widow after me. This partnership is done. And he said, you hear me? It's done. And she's just sitting there tearing up. And that's where the episode ends. So now we got Elena in on the mix. Uh, who's really behind? Uh, who's behind all of this? Well, obviously, Uncle. <laughs> in some sort of way. Uncle is controlling everything. But who is Uncle? We sh we shall soon find out who Uncle is, but I think you know who it is by now. Uh, we all know who it is. Come on. But uh, yeah, that's my thought. That's uh, the review of episode four. Great episode. Plenty of action. Uh, great uh, acting work in this episode. Uh, it's been looking really great uh, on on screen too. So. I would definitely rate this uh I would definitely rate this an eight point five out of ten this episode. Um like I said, great acting, uh great uh action sequences. Uh all the characters are making sense so far on why they're doing what they're doing. And uh yeah, if you have yet to watch Hawkeye the show on Disney Plus, certainly watch it. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for stopping by, liking, commenting, sharing. Uh, subscribe if I've yet to earn your subscription. I hope that today's the day. And uh, yeah, until next time, guys. Peace.